extended periods of times. It's unhealthy for, for anyone. So can it be done safely this fall? Let's discuss with former medical director of the Peace Corps, Dr. Steve Weinberg, and Republican Congressman from Indiana, Jim Banks. Good to have you both with us. Good to be Thank with you. you. All right, Congressman, I want to start with you because you've introduced something called the Reopen Our Schools Act that would take away federal funds for school districts that refuse to reopen. Uh, here is some reaction about this talk of reopening from Pat Gardner, president of the Sarasota Classified Teachers Association down in Florida, where the governor has said we're going to get this thing moving. Um, Pat says, I feel like teachers and staff are being put on the front lines with doctors and nurses, EMT people and some police officers, and they haven't been trained on how to work with contagious individuals, and some of them are going to die. She says teachers and staff are going to die if you make them go back. Congressman? Well, the statistics uh, don't back that up, Shannon. What, what we know now is that children are the least uh, at-risk category to contract coronavirus or to spread it. Uh, this issue is personal for me like it is for so many families. I have three daughters who are going into second, third, and fifth grades, watching them go through what they went through with virtual learning that failed, with, which studies now show they didn't retain hardly any of what they learn learned over the last uh, few months when schools were shut down. If we don't put kids back in the classroom, we're leaving an entire generation of kids behind. And the statistics at this point don't back up anything but putting our kids back in the classroom where they belong. Okay, so let's talk about that against the backdrop of the spike in COVID cases that we're seeing in a number of places. Time Magazine today uh, reporting this, uh, the COVID deaths are down, but there are worrying signs of a major spike ahead. They say the recent surge of COVID-19 in states like Arizona, Florida, and Texas was first detected in late May. It's likely too soon to tell for sure whether that surge will lead to a spike in deaths. But at least in one state, Texas, there's already a major warning sign that more deaths are coming. Hospitalizations are spiking, meaning lots of people are getting severely ill. Uh, Dr. Weinberg, we had you on on this topic from the very beginning when there was so much we didn't know. We're several months into it now. So what do you make of where we are tonight? Shannon, there's still an awful lot we don't know, but we've learned so much in the last four months. Uh, I think I agree with uh, the congressman, the, the president, Secretary DeVos. Kids got to be back in school. And this is personal for me, too. I am a school teacher. I'm a college professor. I talked to my boss yesterday and said, what am I going to do? I've got a, a kids registering in my class. She said, we don't know yet. So I don't know if I'm going to teach in person. I don't know if I'm going to teach online. Uh, but I know the kids have to get back in school. This is a very complicated issue. It is not a one size fits all. Uh, there's no way we can say that a school district in, in Washington uh, state and a school district in Florida uh, have the same problems. They've got different problems and, and the local control uh, is where the rubber will meet the road. Just a couple of real quick examples, just school teachers, for example, a lot of school teachers in some of the districts are 25, 30, they're right out of college and some are very seasoned and they're, they're 50 and 55 totally different risk factor for them. I saw today, and I'm real proud of this, the Texas Education Agency came up with a fantastic plan. The Congressman, take a look at it. I think it's great. Uh, it was didn't order the districts to do what they recommended. They came up with a several page plan that I wish I could have written myself. Uh, it really goes into great detail about uh, how to get kids back in school, what to do if you find an infection in them, how to mitigate the problems, how to protect teachers. And I think we're gonna, we're gonna face this very soon. Another problem is we, six weeks from now, look at six weeks ago. We didn't have anything near the number of cases we have now, and now we've got a spike. But what are we gonna be like in six weeks? I don't know. So this is a- There's so much we don't know. Yeah, this is a problem waiting for a solution. So, Congressman, what do you make of those who say that this has turned into a political um, football, essentially, that people who support the president want these schools open because it will let parents go back to work and help the economy, uh, and accusations that those who don't are trying to hold out uh, to somehow impact the election uh, in the fall to benefit former Vice President Biden? Yeah, I don't know what to think of it. Uh, on one hand, the president has been strong on this message of reopening the schools. His administration is strong on this message as well, Secretary DeVos making very strong statements today that she agrees with the premise of my Reopen Our Schools Act that I introduced last month, that taxpayers are, are going to begin wondering why are we paying 
taxes to fund programs like school safety grants, for example, if the school is not going to reopen in the fall. So his administration is on the, is on the right side of uh, reopening the school. So you, you immediately have the detractors and those who hate President Trump who take the other side of the issue. I don't think it has anything to do with the election at all. This is about leadership. I, I've had school superintendents of my, in my district reach out to me even just tonight about their plans to reopen in the fall. That's the type of leadership that we need. We, we need to change this conversation from our schools might not be able to reopen in the fall to our schools will mm -hmm. reopen in the fall. But here is what it's going to take to get there. And I, I serve on the education committee in the Congress. I vow to work with any school system in America if they commit to reopening in the fall. And I, I want to work with them on solutions to do that. My bill yeah. grants schools with liability protections, for example. But at the same time, it states mm -hmm. very clearly that if you don't reopen in the fall, then we have to ask questions about why we're funding particular federal grants with taxpayer dollars for schools that don't reopen. Well, we will watch that piece of legislation on the Hill uh, and we will watch the medical data as it comes in. Congressman Banks, Dr. Weinberg, thank you both very much. Come back. Thank you.